Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. We are back today with another fun dinner and a movie. I'm so excited because since 4th of July is around the corner, I love to rewatch some of the movies that I watched from my childhood that included 4th of July scenes or parties. So for today, we are doing one of the classics, My Girl. That's my best friend, Veda Saltenfuss. She's more fun to be around than anyone I know. Have you ever kissed anyone? No. I love, love, love this movie. I can't even tell you how many times I've watched it just in my lifetime. And my husband has never seen it, not once. So this is gonna be a fun little dinner in a movie session. Now, there's not a ton of food scenes in this movie, but they do have their 4th of July barbecue. So I'm gonna try and incorporate a little bit of that inspiration into today's dinner. I am gonna make grilled hamburgers on the barbecue, just like Anna's dad and uncle were fighting over. Harry, 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 Harry. I told you to use fewer briquettes and now look what you've done. Do you want no, to do it? No, no. How's it going, chef? Okay. I love your apron. But I'm also going to go ahead and make my own hamburger buns today. I haven't done it in so long and the last time I did it, they turned out so, so good. Fresh baked buns, you gotta try them once. Also in their little barbecue scene, I did spot out some corn. So we'll throw some corn on the cobs on the grill as well. Super easy and simple. And I'm pretty sure I saw on the table or on the plates was a potato salad. But to kind of switch it up from the normal everyday potato salad I make, I'm gonna go ahead and try a new recipe, which is a crispy smashed potato potato salad with some fresh dill in it. It's I'm hoping it's gonna be delicious. And for dessert, I really like to include desserts in these dinner and movies if I can. I didn't see a lot of dessert scenes, but they did take a little family outing to the carnival. So I'm gonna do a carnival inspired dessert today. Something that I've never tried making before, but I have ingredients on hand. We're gonna do deep fried Oreos. They're super indulgent, so I'm only gonna need to make a few here. So I don't think I need a lot of those just sitting around, if you know what I mean. So we have a lot to do. Let's go ahead and get started. Now this hamburger bun recipe is gonna be a small batch recipe, so it's only gonna make a few, which is all that we need. So I'm gonna break out my sand mixer and go ahead and get our dry ingredients started. So in my sand mixer, I'm first gonna add one and three fourths cup of just some all purpose flour, along with one tablespoon of sugar. This is half a teaspoon of salt, and I'm gonna do half a tablespoon of some instant yeast. Just mix these dry ingredients for a minute. All right, now I'm gonna add my wet ingredients. So I have a third cup of water in there and about a tablespoon of butter. And I have one beaten egg and I'm just gonna throw in about two tablespoons and reserve the rest for brushing on top of the buns later. We'll give those a mix. Okay, it's been 10 minutes and our dough is pretty much formed. I'm just gonna go ahead and take it off the hook and I'm going to place it in my oven. I set it on the bread proof setting, which is 95 degrees. And I'm gonna let it sit in there to rise for about an hour and a half. Now for this smashed crispy potato recipe, I'll go ahead and link down below the recipe from the cookbook that I'm using. But I'm going to use these little potatoes from Little Potato Company. Um, cause the recipe calls for golden potatoes and these are the closest that I have. I really love these packages. Just as a nice switch up from russet potatoes sometimes. So first step, we're gonna go ahead and get this package of potatoes boiling in the water to get them fork tender. Okay, so I have my potatoes in some cold water and I'm just gonna add a little bit of salt to it to, to add flavor right away. And we're gonna get these boiling. Now that my potatoes are fork tender, I'm just gonna set them on this baking sheet and I'm spreading them out just on some parchment paper that I have crumpled up to help make it stay better. I'm just gonna use a glass and smash these down. 
which is really easy to do because they're so tender now. And I've actually only had smashed crispy potatoes once, maybe one time ever. My cousin, she actually made them as part of a dinner that she made for my husband and I on the day we got legally married before our like bigger wedding. And when she made them, they were so delicious. I'm telling you. So ever since then, which was years now, <laughs> I've always wanted to make them myself. So this will be sort of like a fun little twist on using smashed potatoes for this potato salad. And now that I have them all smashed down, I'm just taking a little bit of olive oil and brushing them over the tops. And I'll add a little bit of salt and pepper to the tops of each of these as well. We're gonna bake these for about 45 minutes to get a really nice crisp on them at 425. I'm so excited for these. I know they're gonna be delicious. So here's what they look like. We're gonna go ahead and pop them in the oven. Okay, so we are back with our dough for our buns. You can see it doubled in size. So we're just gonna go ahead and deflate it, punch it down, and pull it out onto our board here. Remember I said this is just a small batch recipe. So we're going to make four buns out of this. I'm gonna form it into just a simple ball and cut it into our four pieces and just kind of form them slightly into a bun shape. And I have here just a baking sheet with my silicone mat on it. So we're going to put these back in my oven on the bread proof setting for another about 30 to 45 minutes so that we can let it do a second rise before we actually prep the buns to bake them. So by the way, I love this silicone baking mat. Even though it doesn't exactly fit this tray, I make it work. <laughs> this is the, if you follow any of my clearance or discount hauls, this is my Pioneer Woman one that I got on clearance at Walmart for only $3. I love when I can find new bakeware and cookware on my clearance hunts. So we're gonna put these back in the oven. Another 45 minutes, proof. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get started on our burger patties. I have a pound here of 93% lean ground beef. I'm gonna add a teaspoon of salt and some garlic powder and some onion powder, some black pepper, and I'm also gonna add some mustard, which I don't typically do, but I found a new recipe that I'm following. And I know usually you use 80-20 for burgers, but I've been trying to up my protein in a lot of the foods that I'm eating. So we're gonna roll with this. Go ahead and mix that in. And we'll just form this into some patties. Okay, my buns are done with their second proof time. They look nice and round, <laughs> nice and proofed. So I just took the remaining of my egg, beaten egg, and mixed it with a little bit of water. And I'm just gonna brush that over the tops so that they have that sort of nice golden color, hopefully, when they come out of the oven. The original recipe uses sesame seeds for sesame seed buns, but I'm just gonna go ahead and use my everything bagel seasoning because I love that topping on everything. And my husband likes it too, so I'll add it here. I have my oven preheating at 375, and we're gonna pop these in for about 15 to 18 minutes until they're golden. Okay. Now that we have all of our patties formed, we're gonna set that aside. And I'm gonna work on a little sauce for these burgers. It's always nice to switch it up from just mayo and ketchup and add a really good tasty sauce. So I'm just gonna start with some mayo and I'm gonna add some sweet relish. This is some no sugar added relish and some more of our yellow mustard. And I'm gonna go in with about a teaspoon of paprika 
That's gonna help with the color and give it some nice flavor. And I'm gonna do a nice squirt of ketchup, about a teaspoon of just some white distilled vinegar. Super simple, that's how it looks. Give that a mix. It's good, it's like a nice tangy, flavorful sauce. So we're gonna set that aside for now. Okay, let's check on our buns. They look like they have some really great color. All right, they look great. I'm just gonna let them sit and cool for a bit. Oh, they smell so good. I love fresh baked bread. Now that our burgers are prepped for the grill, I wanna go ahead and get our corn dehusked also. What I am super excited to watch this movie again. I love that it's a coming of age story for Veda, even though she's with her father and I guess this sort of funeral home business of his. Super scary if it were me as a kid. But she does have her best friend in the world, Thomas J. And I love Macaulay Culkin's child performances in movies. I still even get pretty teary-eyed to this day. Such a great movie, so many great scenes. All right, here's our crispy potatoes out of the oven. Super hot, but they're nice and crispy. They smell great. Okay, now that our potatoes are done in the oven, I wanna go ahead and start with the potato salad sort of dressing and rest of ingredients. So I'm having the recipe today because uh, the original one calls for a pound and a half of potatoes and I got about half of that. And I'll definitely link the recipe down below if you wanna try it out but I'm just adding my mayo. That's about a third cup, and I'm gonna do about half a cup of Greek yogurt to, to add a little more protein. And I'm gonna do about a teaspoon of Dijon mustard. I'm gonna add half a teaspoon of minced garlic, and I have fresh chopped garlic here. It calls for juice of a half of lemon, but I only have the bottle right now, so I'm just gonna do like a little squirt. I'm gonna do about a teaspoon of some red wine vinegar. And on my board here, I have some fresh chopped dill, um, cucumber, green onion, and some purple onion. It calls for shallots, but I don't have that, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use my red onion, red or purple, whatever you call it. So I'll add in my dill. And before I forget, let me just do a little bit of salt and pepper. Just a little bit of garlic powder, maybe a dash since I have fresh garlic in there. I'll stir that in. This is what we're looking like. And I'll give it a little taste. Oh, pretty good. Okay, I'll throw in those diced cucumbers, our green onion, and my super crispy potatoes. We'll go ahead and throw those in as well. And I want these flavors to sort of marinate a bit. Which is why I'm making this before we get the grill started. And these crispy potatoes can absorb this nice flavorful dressing. And our potato salad is done. I'm gonna cover it and throw it in the fridge. Okay, so I have my patties on the grill here. It is really hot but I'm also adding my corns up here to get them nice and charred. Okay, so my husband is on grill duty right now, flipping the burgers and the corn. So I wanted to go ahead and prep some of the produce that I wanna put on top of these burgers. I have some lettuce, tomato, onion, and then I do want to add my beautiful hamburger buns. You look at these. I'm gonna split them in half right now so that we can get them nice and toasted up on that grill as well. Just as soon as the burgers are closer to being done and those corn cups as well. And so I split this one open. Nice, beautiful bun. Smells so good. All right, now I wanna get started on my dessert. My 
deep fried Oreos, carnival style. So I don't have traditional Oreos, but I do have this box of birthday cake sandwich creams. And I have my oil on medium heat right now, heating up on the stove. We're gonna go ahead and start mixing up our batter. I'm gonna add one cup of milk to my bowl. I'm gonna do one egg and we'll go in with two teaspoons of vegetable oil. And I'm just gonna whisk, whisk together my wet ingredients. Now I chose this recipe because it utilizes just regular pancake mix, which I always have I always have on hand. And I'm gonna add about a cup of my crusties mix. Whisk that into my wet. All right, now I got most of my lumps out. I'm gonna pop out my birthday cake sandwich cookies and just dunk in a couple at a time and get them nice and coated. And my oil is at 375, so we're gonna go ahead and drop those in. Drop each in, and I'm gonna let these go until they're golden. Should take about two minutes or so. You can see some of them are already turning a nice brown color, and I wanna make sure I flip them. And these two look about ready. I'll go ahead and grab these ones out. Okay, I have my Oreos out of the oil and I put them directly on a cooling rack because I don't want them to get soggy. They have a nice crisp edge on them. Let's go ahead and split this one open. You can see the cream filling in there. They smell super good. All right, everyone, that is it for this dinner in a movie. Check out our little mini barbecue platter that we made together. The burgers were really good. Even my little toddler ate a bunch of his burger that was on his plate. And my husband really liked that potato salad. So I think it's a win. It's always nice to switch it up from the normal once in a while. Of course, grilled corn, always good, always a winner. And that new burger sauce I tried, it was pretty tangy. It was on the tangier side, but overall it was really good. I liked it. And I'm glad we got around to making our own homemade buns again. I haven't done it in so long. I'm so glad I was able to have time today to throw those in for this dinner. And of course, our carnival inspired deep fried Oreos were delicious. I just paired it with some really simple ice cream and did a little shower of the powdered sugar like they do at carnivals. And because the batter was so easy, I would definitely make those again someday. But it is the kind of treat that I would only have very once once in a while. Thank you so much for hanging out with me on this dinner and a movie of one of my favorite classic movies for 4th of July. If you like this one, please make sure you give this video a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.